Hello everyone and welcome back to the Modern Investing channel. Today we are going to talk about commodity investing for 2022. In the last year, commodity stocks have been in a massive uptrend and we will look now on which ones are still have a lot of potential upside and which ones to stay away from. Let's dive into it. Commodities are all the raw material we need in our life, from metals to agricultural products, Prices are cyclical by nature, and that's a beautiful thing for investors. If you have the patience and the stomach, you can wait through the boring and ugly periods and profit when the prices are exuberant. Commodities historically do well in inflationary periods, and this year marked the highest inflation levels since 1982. How inflation will trend going forward, nobody knows, but it might not be a bad idea to have a small part of the portfolio exposed to commodities to hedge against inflation. Let's look at the commodity index. In the last 30 years, it had a lot of ups and downs, with this gigantic spike in 2008 followed by a massive crash. What we can see in this chart is that we are now at a relatively low to average levels as compared to the last 30 years, despite the great bull run we enjoyed this last year. This means that the sector is overall still not too hot and might offer some great investment opportunities. Let's now look into what it has to offer. Last year, I made a video where I said that I would be investing in Cobalt, link in the description below. I saw a huge demand increase due to its role in electric vehicle batteries, despite trading relatively low on a historical perspective. I published it on the 30th of May, when Cobalt traded little above 40,000, and since then it almost doubled, to today that is trading little above 70,000. Getting the time so right was pure luck, but the mindset of looking at depressed prices in commodities that have strong demand going forward I think can lead to great trade opportunities just like that. Especially mining stocks have a leverage on the price of the underlying commodity and can lead to big gains difficult to find in other stocks. For example, I bought Cobalt Blue Holding as my speculative play on Cobalt and it is now up more than 400% from my cost basis. Now the question is, can we find other hidden possibilities out there? The battery metal thesis still holds in my opinion. In the years to come, cobalt, nickel, lithium, manganese are going to see their demand going up. Despite the fact that they are all going to be needed and used more, lithium and cobalt have already had some huge price appreciation. Are they going to go up more in the next 3-5 to five years? Possibly. However, the risk to reward starts shifting in the wrong direction when something is already at an all-time high. Nickel and manganese, however, are relatively low on a historical perspective, as you can see here for nickel and here for manganese. Nickel and manganese are not pure electric vehicle metal plays like lithium and cobalt are. Nickel and manganese have huge use cases in steel and alloy manufacturing. Nevertheless, the battery use case should increase their demand going forward. A stock I'm watching is Aramet. Aramet is a French mining company that is exposed to both metals. Aramet is the world's second largest producer of high-grade manganese thanks to his Moanda mine in Gabon, West Africa. Aramet is also the world's largest producer of ferro-nickel thanks to mines in Indonesia and New Caledonia. Ferro-nickel is used in stainless steel production, but Aramet also has a refinery in Normandy for the purification of nickel to be used in electronics, including batteries. Overall, about three quarters of Aramet revenues are due to these two metals, which make it a focus player. I like that Aramet is positioning itself in the ongoing energy revolution. In December 2020, Aramet and BSF signed an agreement to jointly assess the development of a refined nickel and cobalt hydrometallurgical project to use these metals in batteries. The project will recover the metals from Weda Bay, Indonesia, and aims at start operating the facilities in the middle of this decade. The feasibility study began in early 2021. Moreover, Aramet acquired a lithium project in Argentina, which will diversify its income in one more electrical vehicle metal. I like that Aramet is already producing manganese and nickel today, and it has significant growth opportunities in the next five years due to both its partnership with BSF for producing battery-grade nickel and cobalt and the Argentinian lithium project as well as the planned increased manganese production in Gabon. 
What I don't like is that the price has already gone up a lot since I first bought in. I entered at 32 euros here and it is now trading above 70. I really hate to add at higher stock prices, but at the same time, if the management delivers on the promises and the metal prices stay strong as I expect, the stock has a lot more of an upside. Iron and uranium are two commodities I'm eyeing at the moment. Iron's biggest use case is the manufacturing of stainless steel, and its demand is therefore highly related to the strength of the global economy. Windmills manufacturing also consumes a lot of iron. A 2 megawatt turbine needs 260 tons of steel, so if that sector keeps on expanding at a rapid pace, it will benefit iron demand. These years of lockdown have hindered economical activity and depressed iron prices. Is this an opportunity to enter the metal in a historical period where everything is against it? I think that is a possibility, and iron prices are relatively low on a historical perspective. Vale and Fortescue Metal Group are two mining companies on my watch list that are almost pure play on iron price. I don't have either of them, but I'm considering them. Uranium is perhaps the most speculative of all the commodities discussed here, and I would consider it higher risk. However, there are strong tailwinds going for it, since nuclear energy does not produce CO2 and it can be one of the paths to decarbonize energy production. Europe has recently drafted a proposal to label nuclear investment as green. According to the World Nuclear Association, there are currently 50 nuclear power plants under construction and 445 already operating. That would increase the capacity by 10%, and on top of that, further capacity is created by plants upgrade. Moreover, as you can see in this graph, worldwide uranium production peaked in 2016 and decreased ever since, possibly creating supply gaps as demand increases. Uranium is now trading at 40, doubled from the bottom. Is this it, or will there be more room to run? On a historical perspective, the price is still relatively low, but it is a speculative because political decision will impact the uranium future in a huge way, more than other commodities, and it is therefore more risky. For uranium, I have on my watch list two companies that produce and sell uranium, which are Cameco and CGN Mining. In conclusion, it might be a good idea to have part of the portfolio exposed to commodities, especially during inflationary periods like this one. First and foremost, I keep on being bullish on the raw materials needed for the green energy transition. I'm currently long nickel and manganese, possibly adding more, and I'm watching closer iron and uranium. I expect the demand for these raw materials to lift prices due to their need in shifting to a decarbonized world. Stocks on my watch list for exposure to these raw materials are Aramet, Vale, Fortescue Metal Group, Cameco and CGN Mining. That's it for today, I hope you got value out of this video and let me know in the comments below if commodities are in your radar and which ones you are watching closely. See you in the next video. Before we go, I'd must remind you that I'm not a financial advisor and this content is not financial advice. It's just my opinion and you should do your own due diligence before investing in any product. Have a great day.